हेलो 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 वेलकम एवरीवन टू द सिक्सटी सेकेंड एपिसोड ऑफ इम्प्रूविंग चेस विद सागर एंड द कॉमेडियंस वेल मे बी सागर या ओनली कॉमेडियंस आर राइट नाउ ऑन अ स्लीपिंग काइंड ऑफ स्ट्रीक आई थिंक वैभव इज वेरी बिजी विद हिज शोज आई थिंक फॉर कपल ऑफ डेज दैट इज टूडे एंड टूमोरो सो एवरी वन हु इज फॉलोइंग हिम uh should check out his shows and and go to him and samay i don't know i was reading through the chat and i and i realized that he's just gone to sleep perhaps so well that's uh, perhaps he won't be uh waking up soon <laughs> jamil in the chat welcome jamil to the show and all the wonderful people here who are here who come here to learn chess to enjoy and to have some fun so before we get going today um, i would like to share with you uh, a couple of books that i'm reading right now just so that you know uh, yesterday what we discussed was very interesting one was this mind master uh, that we did and uh, this is one book which i'm reading right now it's called the lying by sam harris i don't know if there are any sam harris uh readers over here very very interesting book it talks about uh why do people lie and why should we avoid lying why lying even the smallest of lies is uh, dangerous for example when someone asks you how am i looking and you know without thinking we often lie we are like we don't want to hurt the other person and he tries to break down this mindset of human beings where they are trying to lie and they call the white lies and i i like it very much uh jamil says sagar bhai do i have to register separately on playchess for the knighthood blitz or letting you know is enough jamil just send a mail to team chess base india at gmail all title players just send a mail to team chess base india at gmail.com and your name uh, will be uh, added and uh, another one is this uh, which is called solve for happy uh this is something which uh, amruta was reading about and she said let's uh, like she read about it somewhere and it's written by mo gaudat former chief business officer of google uh, and and basically uh, it's a very interesting story of this man who worked in microsoft before and then in google uh, and he earned a lot you know he he became very successful he was the head of the middle east uh, operations of microsoft and then at some point he had so much money and he he said you know this is something which should give me happiness but later on he realized that actually uh, it wasn't at some point he even bought two rolls royce for himself uh and when those cars entered his uh, curb uh he he just didn't feel happy and that's when he started to think about happiness more deeply uh and he started to try to find you know he's an engineer at the end of the day so he tried to find some kind of a formula uh, an equation for happiness i think it's a it's a good one <clears throat> so uh these are the two books and usually what amruta and i do is we read these books together like she maybe she's doing something else but i'm reading out loud and then we discuss these points uh and it it helps us i mean to to understand things more deeply and we argue a lot so that's how generally it is so guys i just wanted to make sure that all of you uh also uh, take care of certain other things i'm i'm sure you all do but if you need some good books or something to read then these were some suggestions okay let's today i have you know slept well i have uh, kind of come in the mood to play a good game of chess so i'm going to share my screen and if all of you any one of you who would like to play can come in the room on in the comedian's room <laughs> that would be wonderful it's in the link in the description today and uh yeah okay 
all right so i think dev was someone whom we wanted to play the other day but he wasn't available so let's challenge him dev and we can play a game with him okay fantastic uh i'm going to try and play something different today uh let's go with what shall we start with b3 okay let's begin this is one opening that i have always uh, tried to learn and play bishop b2 sohel ahmed thank you so much sohel knight c6 and it's called the nimzovich larsen attack and you're going to try and attack this pawn here uh, d5 may not be the best idea bishop b5 putting pressure on uh, but that loses a pawn dev that loses a pawn that's not a good idea i take i don't know if there is some oh but that that loses another pawn or does it no i take bishop g7 queen g5 bishop h8 queen takes g2 queen f3 should be okay i mean I win a rook. Okay, the safe way is to just take on d6, but I don't see anything wrong with taking on g7. Let's take it. Thank you, Sohel Ahmed, for the super chat. Good morning. Ah, today's Eid. Okay, Eid Mubarak to everyone. Uh, well sometimes when you start a game it becomes very very shocking for the people who are playing and then they just play something so okay let's let's play with drag bar i don't know who he is drag bar yes always forward jemils uh, advice Today we are going to do something very interesting. By the way, drag bar is not online. Uh, I I have planned something very interesting. You know, always ah, he's there. Always I have to prepare in two ways. One is if the comedians are going to come, and the other one is if they are not. And so uh, today I have prepared something very very exciting, uh, which we are all going to look at. and you are going to have great fun so after these games you're going to do that <sighs> sandeep says you you have an amazing narrative skill so please do narration of any book in the night stream so more like you're putting you to sleep ah huh, sandeep Okay, so I want to play my bishop out of the pawn chain. Put the pawn on e6. That's the idea. H3. Actually, this drops a pawn. If I take on f3, queen f3, c d, e d, knight d4, it's not a good idea. Okay, let's take. 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 uh and yeah i did give up my bishop but i do win a pawn and uh with relative stability in the position i think it's okay to to uh take it takes on d4 and well your your pawn up and now the idea is that if i can quickly uh play e6 bishop e7 and castle that would be nice so let me come back and put e6 bishop e7 castles would be nice okay e6 akshat sharma says hi sagar can you play a game with me also id is dark underscore knight 786 okay maybe the next game akshat 
bishop e7 and well the bishop is put on a good diagonal that is for sure uh, and now that I have castled I have a small threat which is my opponent which falls into see he has the bishop pair so he should have at least tried to hang on to it now with knight b4 I'm actually threatening his bishop which he cannot move because c2 pawn will hang so I'm going to take it and then I'm just uh, pawn up uh, without him having the bishop pair so I'm I'm pretty safe in that respect I think converting a winning position is an art which is very very important you need to think ahead you cannot just say uh, you know yesterday when I was commentating on uh, some of his games uh, in my audio form maybe many of you were there uh, the one thing which I noticed was it was very difficult for him to convert positions where he was ahead on material ah king what is this move if I take king into h7 what's your plan I have no clue I have no clue I can just take Utkarsh Malhotra thank you so much for the super chat Utkarsh says good morning Sagar I hope you are well and doing good absolutely absolutely doing well uh, and uh, today we have a big big blitz tournament in the evening where I'll be commentating and also we have uh, it's it's the knighthood blitz and uh, bishop f6 okay I'll take anyway doesn't seem anything wrong there's there's no check with which he can pick up the knight and even if he could his rook is hanging and also his c2 pawn is hanging so a lot of things are going wrong uh, and uh, so there's this blitz tournament at 12 30 we have the chuchelo vidit camp beginning today uh, and uh, uh, good news for everyone is that there are there are 11 people and also Ilam Parthi uh, is one of the people who will be in the camp uh, because although the the camp is meant for people below uh, about 2300 uh, Ilam Parthi deserves this uh, opportunity is very strong very good player and yes some of the funds that we've collected are going to be used for that of course I'll, I'll let you know about that more in detail guys 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 that's a free queen it's a free queen. Nine into C two. Yes, all those who want to join today's Blitz event, please do so. It begins at eight o'clock. There's a link in the description. Uh, you can check it out uh, in the description. And if mods can just put it up, uh, that would be really cool if uh, you can put up this link of today's tournament because it's it's a fantastic event. Ah, oh, there's a fork. Yeah, you should always be careful even when you are winning. Let's be careful. Let's be careful. Not give up material. And Badur Jobawa is playing today very exciting by the way guys i i think you should you should know about who badur jobawa is uh, he's called the modern day mikhail tal uh, because he's just so so aggressive he plays chess without a care in the world uh, brilliant player okay 93 idea is if he takes queen takes e3 and i take on e5 rook d3 maybe just get in and it's checkmate yeah rook d1 rook takes d1 take and that's and also so so that is happening tonight if you guys would like to register can do so uh sujit vargis who who is a regular viewer of this show and i think he is there today watching this is the guy who sponsored uh this entire tournament with one and a half lakh rupees that he spent yeah, this is my last game for today. Let's see Dark Knight 786 if we can have a good game today. D4, Knight F6. Knight F3, E6. Maybe London system. Yeah. Okay, cool. D5. Uh, 
and uh, so Jobawa would be here and then Pragna Nanda is playing today uh, also Arvind Chidambaram lot of GMs I think there are close to 30 40 GMs who are taking part it's going to be a mega event we're going to commentate uh, on it today at 8 p.m. Okay, knight to e5. I want to break in the center with c5. Goblet fire says, what is the right way to approach a chess book? Nice question. Nice question, goblet. Let me finish this game and we'll discuss that. Knight c6. f4. Hmm. So it's a stonewall setup. And this is always quite difficult to break through. You know, I have a problem with this bishop, where to get it out. Secondly, this knight is very strong. So taking all of that into consideration, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put my knight into e4 first. Because that's a good square for my knight. It has been weakened. And I'm going to plan and put my pawn to f5. So that now, it's kind of a fixed structure. Uh, and... I have a slightly more space. Okay, you can try and attack. But once your uh, bishop is kind of blocked in, I don't think it's so... Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to learn from the game of Aryan Ranjan and Arya Shah. Uh, and I'm going to play uh, c4 here. Let's see. Let's see what happens. c4, I think the best idea would be to... Oh, taking is not a good idea. Taking is definitely not good. I take... Yeah, you want to attack, that is true. But maybe I just take now, here, this is what I, actually this is very similar to what that day we saw, yeah, between Aryan Ranjan and uh, Arya Shah. And now my plan is simple, yeah, I want to play b5, b4. Oh, taking there is risky, absolutely risky. Because first of all, what you are doing is uh, two things. You are not developed well. Okay, I want to play my bishop to g5 so that if queen h5, I can put it to g h6. Keep an eye on this weakness. I don't know if it's a good idea or not. But I like it. I like it. The other one is queen e8, stopping queen h5. I also like that idea a lot. Queen e8. And put the queen on f7 I think it's a good one yeah let's go queen e8 and and as we discussed that day this rook is misplaced I need to start my play on the queen side but now now you're going to face some trouble uh, Akshay first of all I can go queen f7 threatening queen f2 queen f1 mate and you have to be very careful here yeah you go back and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start my play on the queen side. I don't want to wait. I don't see any threats from him. And I'm going to play b5. So b4 uh, is the next move that I want to play. I want to be quick in opening up. Okay, let's go a5. Or should we waste time? Let's play five. Bd two, okay. So he's he's getting all his pieces developed, which is nice. And at the end, his plan could be to go knight g three and rook f one. So we need to start getting ready for that in some way. Uh, how about how about playing bishop d seven first? finishing the development and now going b4 by the way i'm low on time ah he's playing bishop e1 nice move b4 okay let's go quicker let's go faster there um okay bishop h4 i take take rook b8 now i want to get in here uh, could be at some point i can play get in yes now i want to take this it's turning out to be quite an intense game. Quite an intense game. Knight g3. Uh, I want to go queen a3, but then I'm afraid that my... Uh, everything would be too weak over there. 
but let's let's do it yeah let's do it okay let's do it queen a3 this is risky chess but who cares i mean he has this threat of knight h queen g4 knight h5 which is risky which is risky for me oh this is passive this is passive rook b2 should i go who taking a lot of time taking a lot of time here guys should should speed up let's go in it's like it's like he's trying to attack me and i'm trying to somehow defend with play on the queen side you know that is the idea okay take on a2 can i take this pawn i know it's just clutching at straws but maybe there is an idea there is an idea rook f2 i like it or first let's go bishop e8 ah let's get rid of this knight that knight is the biggest worry for me in my position if i can get rid of it i'll be happy knight f4 nice 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 okay bishop f7 protecting that <laughs> now the bishop kind of dominates the knight and i have play on the queen side i have only 47 seconds left my god i need to speed up but i'm happy that i have controlled everything here and i want to put my other rook here then i want to take on a2 so things are looking good for me positionally but time wise in trouble in trouble See the rook on h3 has been there right from the start of the game you know it's not doing much and that's his biggest problem i would say the rook over there rook g3 come let's go here uh, let's try to take on a2 yeah let's take on a2 take a pawn take now rook b1 is a threat yeah let's go in let's go in Queen e2. Queen e2. Should I exchange the queens? I think exchanging the queens would be the safest. Just take an a4, a3, a2, a1. Oh, take on g7. Does that work? Does that work? Take. I don't think it works. I don't think it works at all. Queen g3. Oh, queen h4. Oh, fantastic. Oh, this was a great try by him. How should I play? Let's come back. King G8. Knight E6. Okay, there's a mate there. Should I take? Should I not take? Okay, if I take. Oh, it's a draw. It's a draw. It's a draw. I may have to draw. He actually swindled me. Yeah? He swindled me very well. I have to. I have to take a draw. Yeah, there's no other way. Oh no that was that was intense game that was an intense game rook b1 maybe okay i have to analyze this game well but just this point i i can't believe that this worked for him rook up but the knight and the queen as we already discussed it was yeah let's let's analyze this game actually well played well played to my opponent akshat you put tremendous pressure on me uh at some point but you see the game was very similar to the one we discussed with aryan ranjan and uh, uh arya shah and you know that game actually gave me some ideas uh okay Bishop d3, bishop e7, castles, knight e5, c5, c3, knight c6, f4. Okay, this is a sto stone wall. And usually, you know, if you get a knight here, so what usually white does is that he goes knight d2. And let's say after queen c7, now you go f4. My knight cannot jump here because this square is controlled twice. 
basically so um f4 i played knight e4 this is fine knight d2 and i i said let's go f5 that seems okay he played rook f3 and this is always i'm a little bit skeptical because the rook is misplaced of course you are getting close to my king and c4 is a very committal move um but i said well that day it worked out well and so and taking here might not be the best idea i think bishop c2 could be possible but okay he took f takes rook h3 and now i took on e5 because i was expecting him to take here and then i could put my bishop on c5 maybe play b5 b4 but he took with the f pawn and as mentioned now the f file is open and my queen can always double up and this is what i did queen e8 my other idea was to go bishop g5 queen h5 bishop h6 but somehow i didn't like it so much i'm not sure if the bishop is well placed i know it's attacking the weakness on e3 always but he can defend it his rook is defending it and then i was not sure if my bishop is well placed here so i decided queen e8 queen g4 queen f7 now threatening a check king h1 and a mate so he defended against it with queen e2 and when opponent comes ahead and goes back it's like you can feel like you have a you have got the advantage here so i played b5 which was again natural i want to open up things here he played knight f1 i went ahead with a5 but maybe this is just the the one move slow you know why not play b4 the only reason why i avoided this was that takes takes bishop d2 and i felt like uh, i'm exchanging my good bishop for his bad bishop but i think it doesn't matter i'm just rook b8 and i'm faster that's what is more important i believe so maybe this move a5 which i played was unnecessary he played bd2 i went bd7 just developing uh, bishop e1 b4 okay bishop h4 nice idea by the way by my opponent to exchange the bishops uh, bc bc and rook b8 he took queen takes and now i was happy i was like look there's no attack here nothing looks like attack my king is safe and i'm threatening queen a3 and infiltration so he went knight g3 and here actually i took a big risk big gamble actually and i played queen here uh, which is according to me a bad move I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Because, okay, I saw that queen h5, I can go h6. And somehow there is no mate. Uh, now I'm threatening c3, e3 and all these pawns. So it was also risky for him. For example, if he goes queen g4, I was, I could take on g4, uh, on c3, attack the rook, also attack e3. So I think he decided to defend. And this is where I think I should have an edge, should have an edge. Let's think a bit more here. You know, I, I made this move rook b2 here. Uh, knight h5. And yeah, here I think critical moment. I could take on a2. I was also thinking of rook f2 here. Getting into the position. But I was a little bit afraid of rook g3 defending g2 and also attacking my g7 pawn of course he cannot take with the queen here because if he takes he doesn't win two rooks he actually loses a rook after queen b2 check and he loses this so i was really wanting to uh but he has rook g3 i don't know i I could go g6, but then knight f6 check. And then if king g7, I mean taking on f6 makes no sense. If king h8, he takes on d7. He's a piece up. Although still I feel there could be something happening here, but maybe nothing specific. Uh... So rook b2, knight h5, bishop e8. Yeah, I was actually proud of this move because I thought 
if I can eliminate this knight, it's almost over. He has less attacking chances. I'm breaking through from here. But knight f4 and again, I was very happy here that everything is working well. And then he plays this move rook g3. Ah, this move was very, very nasty. I think I should have done something here. Okay, rook b8. And he played h3 here. I don't know. H3, maybe I took on A2. Um, yeah, takes, takes. And I thought I'm, I'm just winning now because I have a big threat with rook K1. And if he goes here, I'll play rook, sorry, rook B1. I'll play take, take and A4. You know, I was dreaming of making this pawn into a queen. He can't stop it. He can't stop the pawn. But this is where he struck with this fine move. Fantastic. Amazing. Uh, here, queen h4. Also, queen g3 maybe. I don't know. Bishop, bishop g6, knight h5. See, what has happened is, it's like this. First, he brings all his pieces to the king side and I try to infiltrate on the queen side. And once I'm successful, he then says, hey, but look, your king is all alone. And he takes here. Queen h4. And I don't know here. I was down to 20 seconds. But I was not sure how to defend this. I mean if I could just magically get my queen here. I am fine. I will be winning. But my queen is just too misplaced. 6 king g8. Yeah knight into e6. And now I couldn't see a way to stop this. So I took, took, and now I would have been stupid if I tried to win here because then check and he takes b8. So I decided to call it a day. Sometimes you have to draw, like even if I went king g7 here, uh, then queen f6 check and it's the same thing. Shall we have a look at it? Um, look at what the engine suggests because that will just make me 100% certain of my decisions it could teach me and always you should do that first think for yourself about certain things here it's because on stream I'm not taking too much time but I would have thought a lot more I think this game teaches me a lot about how to play in these structures so knight e4 is fine knight d2 f5 is fine rook f3 is good and uh, c4 maybe what computers suggest here is to first play bd7 maybe not and then continue like for example if he goes rook h3 then now i can take take and play bishop e8 or if take here sorry bishop e8 is a possible move okay so i played c4 which is also fine bishop e4 fe Rook h3, take, fine. Fe5 was a bad move. Queen e8 is winning almost. My god. Queen g4. And now the computer suggests, okay, queen f7 is still okay. b5, yes, this is completely better. Knight f1. a5 is not so great. But okay, still, in the, in the the with the advantage, bd7, bishop e1, b4, bishop h4. B takes, B takes, rook a, b8. Oh, it's winning completely, my god. Takes, takes, knight g3. Ah, ah. Man. Okay, queen a3 is good, but just from a human angle, just bishop e8 was such so much better. I stop his knight from improving. Okay, first queen a3, fine. Queen e1. Okay, still rook b2 is good, knight h5, and now the, the engine suggests me to take this pawn. Okay, couple of things why I was worried is first rook b1, yeah, just avoiding the exchange doesn't look great. Yeah, this entire concept with rook b2, instead of that, instead of this entire queen a3 business, if I just played bishop e8, I would have dominated this knight, and I'm all ready to infiltrate. Yeah, this is just what I should have done. Okay, g6 is also possible as someone in the chat suggests. g6 dominating the knight. I should have been on a prophy prophylactic mode. 
yeah yeah this is just too superficial yeah queen e1 rook p2 and knight h5 is a good move bishop e8 knight f4 and now bishop f7 uh, please think about having another zoom call party for crossing 400k this week for those who were left last time idea suggested by shiv shom yes aditya let's let's plan this i was thinking maybe to reach 500k quickly and then doing it uh, rook b8 h3 takes takes queen takes king h2 and now yeah i got i got uh, i got I was lured into the trap with rook g7. Good one, good one. I could have played queen a3 if I had looked at that he's going to trap me like this and come back and I'm pawn up and I'll push this pawn. That didn't even strike me. I was so much into this moment of ju jumping in. Queen h4, rook b8 and yeah. Well, now actually he's better. He should have played on check here and e6. I think I would have been in big trouble. <laughs> Look at this. A rook and a queen cannot really fight against a queen and a pawn. Okay, still, I mean, I have to be very accurate. Like queen f7 here, e7 perhaps. And now I must find the move h6. He makes a queen and okay, this is something which I couldn't have been able to do in 20 seconds. But anyway, good game good game too over ambitious yes absolutely i i should have taken care but you know we learned something we learned something very important by this analysis and the the thing is that here you can instead of going queen a3 first play bishop e8 save yourself anyways queen side is gone there is a weakness here there's a weakness here queen is coming in rook is coming in i can afford to take time <clears throat> or i can play g6 which is equally good but that knight should not have been allowed to come like this. That's the point. Okay, let's save this game. Very important game. Guys, you understand yeah, how analysis can actually help you understand and become better. This is my, my main thing that I want to show you guys. Okay, so today, you know when we had this episode 57, five days, five episodes ago, and where we collected a huge sum of money and uh, we're going to use that for uh, for the youngsters of Indian chess. We've already begun uh, using it in the right way. Um, there was a suggestion that you should have uh, that you should have a tournament for the youngsters of Indian chess. So the young talents. And at that point in my mind, I was already thinking of who should we play and who should be invited and how the format should be and I have been thinking about it over the days and this is going to happen soon. We are going to have all the youngsters pitted against each other and so you can see their talent. But today I want to uh, acquaint you with one youngster of Indian chess and you know him very well but I want to show what a talent he is and that's why I have YouTube on. And that is Nihal Sarin, okay? And I, I want to uh, take you to this, this game that we recorded, you know? So this one is the game Nihal Sarin on the right against uh, Nepom Nyashi uh, on, la on left. And we are going to have a look at this game and we are going to learn. Keith Maskerena, so pleased that Ilam Parthi gets to go to the camp. Yes, absolutely, Keith. And I am sure he's going to learn a lot. <clears throat> uh, and this couldn't have been possible without you guys. Uh, Dave, yes, you can register for the tournament from US. No problems. The, in, the, in the article, in the link, it's written how to do it. You have to uh, pay on PayPal and then you can just uh, send a mail to Team Chess Base India. And uh, that would have been worked. That would have worked. So... <clears throat> what what I want to show through this game is the talent of Nihal Sarin. You know, uh, we all know he's really good. He's really talented. But just how good? Just have a look at this. His opponent is Nepomniashi, 28-26. One of the best in the world. In fact, at Legends of Chess right now happening, Nepo has reached the finals along with Carlson. So he is the best in the business. 
yeah and here if you if you check about this game uh, it happened at the world blitz championship 2019 in moscow uh, amruta and i were there as uh, reporting for that tournament so we we decided you know we should put the camera on nihal's game but unfortunately what happened was there's a game on the other end which is happening which is ali reza versus uh, bartosh sochko and we couldn't put a camera here because there's a clock uh, there's you know so far i want to show the clock by the way to the viewers and so we came up with an idea so let's go and what we will do is we will keep this game open at the same time you will think along with nihal and you will also understand how he is thinking and we'll try to learn on the go okay so here is nihal this is the game that we are going to look at let me just open this yeah yeah another match is remaining i mean nepo beat anish yesterday so he's not reached the finals yet but high chances that he may okay so knight f3 d5 this happened just six months ago c4 knight f6 b3 b6 bishop b2 bishop b7 knight c3 let me remove this add yeah knight d7 and we'll we'll discuss this opening ah yes thank you ayushi for reminding me uh, uh so a6 and let's just take take and d4 okay so so we reached this position until now and this is um the opening of the game and there was one question that was uh, asked by goblet of fire uh, who said how to approach reading chess books and this is a very important question i think it has over a period of time i have evolved into someone who has realized that everything in a structured way may not may not give you the best results so so what do i mean for example earlier let's assume i'm reading this book here okay this is 100 end games you must know okay so when i got this book i would be like i would open page number one and i would go through this book entirely one page at a time properly and sometimes i would get so bored and tired that i was like <clears throat> no i don't enjoy this book and then halfway through maybe i would leave it and this happens with everyone yeah like you have and then you get another book and so what i realized okay this is maybe it won't work for everyone but for me it's like okay i open a book i see a position and i try to go over it i try to think so for me in general how chess has evolved is from a scientific game where i'm always trying to find the best move i try to make it into a game where i fine tune my thinking so in give me any position and i want to improve my thinking that's why i really don't care if i'm playing a blitz over here or even if i go and play a big tournament for me it's the same game because it's my brain that is being put to work and so after a point i just pick up any position in a book and i start reading it and oh, i get excited i i read it and this is how you know i kind of feel like you can also you can you can just there's so much chess content and material around but the important thing is this brain if you can get it into the zone to work to think what's happening in a position you will improve much faster yeah and so uh, another question is should we put a chess board on the side while looking at it do what is comfortable for you there is no uh, hundred percent solution some people like for example when i was traveling with vidit to kolkata i was like uh, in the same train and he he was with a book like this and he was uh, sitting on the berth and uh, he had started reading and he was reading he was reading and there were so many complex variations there were lines there were so many moves in it and he was just flipping through it and by the time we reached kolkata he had finished the book and i was like what how are you reading it uh, I cannot even do it, first of all. And secondly, if I did it, 
I don't feel the satisfaction as much as if I have a chessboard by my side. But later I realized that what satisfaction, you know, the most important thing is to improve as a chess player, not to finish books. Finishing books is good, but the main thing is if you can improve. And so uh, since then, I do what I feel, which is helping me to think better. If anything helps you in your thought process, that is much more important. Okay. So Mayank Jaiswal says your views on art of learning by Josh Waitskin. Fantastic book. Guys. Art of Learning by Josh Waitskin. Brilliant book. Brilliant. If, if any of you wants to learn Art of Learning, you know how you can learn things. He's the guy. He's the guy. I, I think I read that book when we reached uh, Sofia in Bulgaria and we were traveling in a bus to Varna, which is a city in Bulgaria. And over there, it was an eight hour journey and I read through the book over there and it's still so fresh in my mind. Waitskin was a child prodigy in US and he was so good, he was so good that actually a movie was made on him which was known as The Search for Bobby Fisher. I don't know if any one of you has seen this movie, Search for Bobby Fisher, but if you haven't, Please have a look at it. It's a, it's a brilliant one, a uh, brilliant movie. Uh, if you see, uh, I'm sure there is something you can yeah, find for this so movie, nice. search for Bobby Fisher. Sorry, searching for Bobby Fisher. And the, the concept is something like uh, Bobby Fisher won the world championship match in 1972 and then just left. You know, no one knows where he went. He just left the world. And everyone was like, my God, he was the most unbelievable player America had ever seen. And now he's no longer there. So who's the next Bobby Fisher? So searching for Bobby Fisher and this boy, uh, Josh Waitskin. Of course, he's not the same kid. Uh, I don't know how he looks, actually. I never tried to find out. Yeah, he's the one, Josh Waitskin. And... He was phenomenal when he was young. Uh, in fact, the Chess Master series which is created is by him. Uh, and I was so, so enamored by Chess Master. And then I realized this was Josh, but he only became an IM. He couldn't even become a GM. And the reason for that was once the movie got released, he got under so much pressure that everyone was looking at him that at the end he decided no. I cannot, uh, I cannot handle it and he gave up chess, but he was good at it. And so he said, now that I've given up chess, what should I do next? And then he took up martial arts. Uh, I think it's called the push hands. And he started trying to get better at that in push hands. And he became a world champion in March in this push hands uh, thing. And he shows how you can learn something new from scratch and become the best in it. So art of living. It's def uh, sorry, art of <laughs> learning, not living. Art of learning is definitely something that you should check it out. Uh, I, I really enjoyed it. Okay, coming back. Coming back to this uh, game. So let's make the first few moves. Knight f3, d5, e3. So Nihal is playing a system against Nepo, which is more solid in nature. But it's also pretty good. Uh, b3 b6 bishop b2 so you put your knight here you put your pawn c4 b3 bishop b2 and now you develop your bishop on e2 but in the game we'll see that he develops it somehow differently bishop b7 knight c3 knight bd7 rook c1 a6 and now he took took and played d4 so think about this position. Now you're playing against a very strong player. I think both of, in the opening both of you haven't taken much time. But his bishop on b7 is slightly closed because of this pawn. But the bishop is kind of putting a pressure on that diagonal and it is helping to for the knight to jump to e4. So that's where the knight is going to jump. This bishop is going to be placed on d6 or e7. I guess d6 is a better square because it looks at h2 more active and you're going to castle. At the same time, Nihal's plan could be to play bishop e2 and castles. Okay, so it's a simple position 
and we are going to go go ahead and see what happens next. Bishop d6, g3, castles, and, and this is a very nice moment actually, uh, where uh, if you see he castles and Nihal now wants to play his bishop, but he touches the pawn. And look at Nepo's reaction. He's like, what? Why are you touching the, the pawn again? Why are you uh, this touch and move? But you see, Nihal actually is smart. What he did was, instead of developing his bishop to e2, he went and developed it to g2 in the position. By the way, uh, here, this, this lady here, that's Amruta. And so what she did was, we did something very smart. We are like, oh, Nihal is playing Nepom Nyashi. It's a great game. It's something where, you know, all the people back home are going to watch it. It's going to be great fun. So why don't we, uh, there's no clock. That's going to be a big problem. And uh, what should we do about it? And so we actually put a mobile phone here that looked at the clock and, I, and you will get to know what we did in a bit. Now it looks easy, but at that point it was quite complex. Rook e8 and now castles. So queen e7 and when you're playing facing a player like Nepo, look at his, look at his expressions, look at the uh, way in which he's playing. He is so confident. And yeah, this is our, this is our innovation. Yeah, look at this. We put, <laughs> so we took a shot from there and we got the clock. But if we just put it like this, normally it would be inverse. Yeah, Nepo's time would be playing uh, in Nihal's side. And the, so we cut the clock. And then we inversed it and then we matched actually the matching part was happened whenever Nihal would make a move his hand would come ahead and it would come on this clock and so we realized like uh, and that's how we managed to get the the clocks here which which actually proves to be very important because this game uh, is a lot about time it's a three minute plus two second increment and knight f4 so let's let's go and check out what happened in the game try to understand and try to learn from both these great players so he played bishop d6 and now here what usually happen uh, happens is that you go bishop e2 castles castles knight e4 perhaps and then the queen may start coming in the bishop looks here and there could be an attack which is brewing up in the position so what Nihal decides to do is that he says, let me play the move g3 now itself. I know that basically you shouldn't be always playing your pawn to e3 and g3 because it once you put bishop on g2, these squares on light squares could become weak. But the important thing to note is that his light squared bishop, which could take advantage of these weaknesses, is on, on the light squares. It's on the side of the board. You know, it's not very active. And that's the reason why uh, this bishop playing g3 makes sense. Oh, we have Nuber Shah Sheikh in the uh, in the chat. Uh, Nuber, happy Eid Mubarak. A lot of people, yeah, uh, saying uh, Eid Mubarak today, and yeah, it's a big big festival and uh, wonderful. Uh, Rook e8, and now castles. And so queen e7, knight e2. Now, one thing which I have always seen uh, whenever I have played a strong player and uh, world class players is their confidence. Uh, first of all, you can see that we'll come to the confidence bit in a second. The rook is on the semi open file. It's putting pressure here. Nihal wants to get his knight to f4 to d3 to e5. That's his plan. He wants to improve his knight position and uh, Black is pretty well developed and I think Black's plan is always to break in the center with c5. Now, in this position, if you look at it, by the way, Kabir Goel is asking, is touch to move a real thing? Of course, touch to move is very, very important in chess. You cannot touch another piece and move something else. Of course, Nihal was just adjusting it, but he should say adjust 
before adjusting something and then adjust it and then move something else otherwise you will have to move the piece which you touched okay so here let's move on but look at nepo's body language it's so confident and sometimes you know it was like uh, i i read in some book where botwinik as uh, opponents wrote that when botwinik comes on the board he sits as if he you know he somehow radiates all kind of power then he adjusts his specs he opens his pen writes down his score sheet and he does all of this with such confidence and such calmness and uh, such verb that uh, his opponents feel they've already lost the game you know chess is such a psychological game and when playing a player like nepo you can see that they are they are exuding in confidence and at that point it's very important to just not look at them to focus on the chess board whenever you play a higher rated opponent many times you are looking at his expression i've seen so many kids they are actually uh, like you know uh looking at the face of the player of, of the opponent what is he doing and in within they are actually getting scared try to block all of that focus on the board try to look at what's happening on the chess board let's move ahead let's see what, how look at how nihal is calm and composed so knight went to e4 as we already know the knight is well placed on e4 and now nihal goes queen to c2 he doubles up on the c5 and uh, here nepo makes a very uh, decent like this is a normal decision to play c5 and actually it uh, it starts something very important now takes takes yeah this is this is fine and now we reach a position okay nuber good day good day and see you to tonight uh, in the blitz tournament hope you play well and you win it queen rook a d8 queen knight f4 knight e4 queen c2 and now he plays c5 and now takes takes and we have a hanging pawn structure here and so these pawns could become weak but they are also strong okay let's try to think now what would you play here as uh as white what would you do here let's try to imagine you are playing with nepo you are white you have some pressure you have this bishop which is opened up now but also his bishop is now much less closed so chess there's always like you gain something you lose something so what to do yeah rook f d1 rook f d1 yes absolutely this looks perfectly fine putting more pressure on this pawn and uh, this is what i think nihal would do um but let's just understand the position much more this point is a soft point it could always come under pressure mainly because the queen and the rook are attacking e3 and the f2 pawn is defending e3 so this is always a soft point you have to be careful you have to be careful bishop a3 suggested by a few people not bad not bad putting pressure but i really like my bishop here at the same time c5 pawn is defended once twice thrice four times it's a lot also knight d3 now makes a little less sense because the pressure has to be put here i cannot get my knight to e5 anymore so rook f d1 looks good uh, ilamparthi suggests knight h4 here Uh, it's a it's a possible move uh, in this position yeah, not bad ilam party this is this is interesting stuff this is what i like yeah uh, about these youngsters they they can create they can create new ideas uh, looking at this square not not makes good sense actually queen g5 perhaps he has to play Uh, or maybe you know ilamparthi there could be an issue related to bishop f4 now you must take with the e pawn because otherwise uh, the knight is hanging and after e takes maybe somewhere d4 may come in and it could block the bishop possible it's a possibility 
which we cannot discount next move uh, knight could jump and then queen f6 so maybe that's what i felt yeah knight h5 is also possible so you guys can see yeah even in such a good top level game you are coming up with your ideas i like it i like it very much knight h5 um, again putting pressure over here but you must must remain careful uh, of yeah perhaps this is also a good decent move maybe f6 could be played maybe knight e5 could be played it's a it's a interesting position okay rook f d1 let's go here and now uh i don't know if he played this in the game let's see rook f d1 did nihal and look at one of nihal's traits is that he thinks a lot he takes a lot of time come on play rook f d1 but he's like no i want to get i want to understand he plays rook f d1 and look at nepo this is intimidation 101 you know this is something where your opponent plays a move and without even thinking you sacrifice a pawn you're like if if there's someone who is not very strong he'll be like what why is nepo giving up and with so much confidence so chess is a lot of game uh, is a game with which requires a lot of concentration you know like a lot of confidence also and you cannot really let your opponent dictate you so after d4 let's try to understand why he gave up the pawn he wants to he wants white to take and then if bishop f4 uh, he wants to spoil the structure that is the main aim so but if you don't take it this is already a move that black wants to make because it opens up his bishop on this diagonal so nihal said okay let's take yeah he takes it and let's go on and see what happens next look at him now staring at staring at nepo this is something what nihal does often he stares at his opponent And now he he picks up the pawn on d4. Nepo takes. Now now you can see the king is slightly weak. The king is weak on the king side. But white has a pawn. A pawn is a pawn, you know. Also you have the bishop pair. So he took. And now the time is already. Nihal is down to one minute thirty seconds, and Nepo is two minutes nineteen seconds. Okay, knight into d4. He takes the pawn on d4, and now you can see that Nepo is thinking. He had just intuitively sensed that giving up the pawn will give him compensation. One thing is the white king has opened up slightly, and now he begins to think a bit uh, in this position. So the pawn sacrifice was not fully thought through; it was more intuitive in nature, and we we reach this position. So once again, let's try to understand what's happening here. If you see, this king is now slightly exposed because of the pawns. Uh, this bishop is going to create some issues at some point. I'm always a little bit scared that when my king is exposed, but not good players are never, you know. Uh, queen h4 could be an idea, but at the same time, Nihal has his own threats. One is knight f5 with the idea of jumping into d6 and f5 so the knight f5 threat has to be very carefully parried here because it's a very big threat in the position at the same time you are not able to do much you are not able to do much in this position as black maybe what can you do so going back to the game let's see what nepo comes up with he's down to he's he has two minutes nihal is one minute 24 seconds and now rook to c8 he attacks the queen first the queen must move and uh, nihal finds the best square for the queen i think e2 seems like a logical square he plays it to e2 just so that the queen also comes closer to the king side. <laughs> now, 
now queen e2 and uh, he takes on c1 rook takes c1 and that's good you know forced moves you make it quickly queen f8 and the point was to now try and defend uh, g7 pawn not run into knight f5 tricks and also unleash a discovered attack on the queen so you can see here after rook c8 queen e2 takes takes he played queen to f8 and we are already reached a position where there are some threats now you know some threat could be knight coming to c3 because there is this attack here and then the bishop looking here the other threat could be knight coming to g3 there are all sorts of threats that are boiling up in this position and once you start feeling a little bit once you start seeing these threats and you're facing a strong opponent it's easy to get nervous what would you play here let's try to think is there is there something good that you can think of in such a position let's try to try to wrap our heads the main problem is i would like to jump in here to uh, to c7 but then he may just move his knight away let's let's say for a move knight f6 attack my queen and when my queen moves he will take on g2 and my queen king may get even further exposed you know so rook c7 was something that uh, ah aditya naidu has an idea he says use alt tab oh nice nice oh that's wonderful i can use this brilliant brilliant okay let's go back to the game and see so now nihal is thinking is thinking for his move queen g4 he plays his queen to g4 and puts a pressure on and you can see how nepo reacts yeah look at nepo's reaction he's like queen g4 look at nepo his face like mm, i don't like this move so much parwar singh i started playing chess a few months ago i'm disabled can't walk since the age of 9 i'm 22 and now finding chess uh, was great as i found something i can do without restrictions been loving these streams to learn fantastic parwar singh i'm so glad i'm so glad i'm going to tell you parwar singh today you should take part in the tournament if you are physically disabled then uh, today's tournament is free for you it's all the money is being raised for players who are who are uh, blind physically disabled and deaf and mute so it would be so nice if you can take part just click on the first link in the description and you can just send a mail to team chess base india and you can see all the steps and take part brilliant brilliant and parwar i'm going to tell you a story today okay at the end guys please remind me for the story it's going to be another legendary story okay queen goes to h4 and now rook went to c8 so so nepo is like i'm a pawn down i understand but i'm up on time i have 1 minute 35 seconds nihal has 50 let me exchange the rooks and then his pawn structure is weak i'll be able to survive okay what to play now what to play nihal is like should i exchange the rooks if i exchange the rooks his queen will come in and you know it's a typical thing of uh, what happened with me against uh, in my previous game that i was playing my queen is too far away here and if his queen takes here it could start coming in the position so that's the reason why rook f1 nihal says i want to keep my rook f2 is weak i'll keep it safe and now nepo starts making the moves and now look at nihal's time it's down to 24 23 he is going down on time queen h3 he plays this move uh, and you can see this this entire nervousness on nihal's face nepo's confidence you know he's moving with such speed such speed rookie eight now knight to f5 so let's let's check out what's happening because this is getting intense nihal has what 11 seconds 
Nepo has one minute. Oh, sorry, Aditya. I should have done alt tab, but okay. Uh, queen g4, knight f6 attacks the queen, queen h4. So now white is putting pressure this way with the queen. Knight can jump to f5. It is amazing. Rook c8, rook f1, and now queen to c5. There came the move, queen h3. And this is mainly to control this square so that the knight jumps at the same time keeping an eye on the rook here. Because then you could at some point take and you cannot take with the bishop because c8 would be hanging and all sorts of threats, okay? So rook e8 was played by Nepo and now Nihal jumps in. And now the game is getting really intense. This knight is looking at g7 square. It's looking at h6. There's this bishop. It's uh, looking here. Also, the queen is pretty strong. Yes, there is an increment. Three minutes plus two seconds increment is there. Uh, so two seconds increment for every move. So Nihal has time because otherwise 11 seconds is just losing. So now let's go on. He plays now. He plays bishop c8. Look at this move. And, and you can see you, you can see the expressions in chess. That's the best part. So now there is this queen and knight and so this queen on h3, this knight and this bishop are looking all at the king side and Nepo says, hey, did you have anything planned here for this move? Bishop c8 and look at Nihal. Nihal's expression was like, what? I didn't see it. You can see these subtle expressions in the players. See this and look at Nepo. Nepo's expression is he stares at Nihal after making the move. And then he's like, mm, I think I'm winning. These are all the things which makes chess beautiful. Knight h6 check. This is what Nihal spots. And this is where I see a blow for a blow is what I like, you know, in top level chess. It's like, you pin, I'm going to lose a piece. Nihal sees, oh, there's a check. Let me play it. And he plays a check and Nepo is like, what? Why is he giving me a free knight? Can't I just take it? He thinks, he thinks he's down to now 1 minute 11 seconds. Look at Nihal's time. He's down to 5, 4 and now he comes back. So let's, let's try to understand what's happening here. Bishop c8 attacking this and knight to h6. Because otherwise you're just losing a piece yeah? here. So knight h6. And now he took because if he moves his king to h8, he may lose another pawn. And if he moves to f8, then queen h4 puts pressure here on this piece you cannot cannot take here anymore. So he took queen into h6. And now he played the move queen to f8. Okay, question for all of you. Nepo was winning here. But you know, in his speed, what he wanted to do was beat Nihal on time. He wanted to beat Nihal on time and that is why he played Queen F8 very quickly. But there's a winning move here. Can anyone find it? Black to move and win. Black to move and win this game. How should black win this game? He's a piece up, guys. He's a piece up, but he cannot move this knight because there is a mate here threatened. And at the same time, he cannot move this knight because bishop into f6, he's going to lose. So, yes, very good, Sumit. Excellent. Excellent. Anyone else? How should black win this position? Yes, Ilam Party. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is the right move. Uh, rook e6 is not a bad idea suggestion by Sushmita, but uh, Sushmita, what are you going to do after bishop into e4 there? Because if you take with the rook, I am going to play bishop f6. If you will take with the knight, then there is queen g7 mate. So rook e6 doesn't solve the problem. And everyone who's saying knight g4, guys, there's a mate here. So you can't play that. Knight into f2, possible. Ah, you you are you are trying for that uh, smothered mate, yeah. Like for example, if I take here, and if I if we if I take on f6, then knight h3 check. Guys, learn this, learn this, okay? Please learn this. Knight on f2, queen on c5, beautifully placed. I'm going to give you a check, a double check, 
always always it works always it works king has to go on h1 and now comes the stunning blow i'm going to let you all find this move please write down in the chat how should how should uh black continue black to move this is mate here in one move and it is brutal yeah absolutely queen g1 very good very good and after takes this is exactly the kind of mate you want to do in your life once in your life rook g1 and knight f2 mate it is just a beautiful smothered mate but the problem with knight into f2 is i think twofold first of all i don't know what happens to rook into f2 we should check it out because ah the threat is queen into f2 king into f2 and knight g4 but nihal is smart yeah he had prepared the move queen g5 here queen g5 check and then you must exchange the queens or else you lose so take take and then he's attacking the knight he's attacking this knight here and he's attacking here and perhaps this gives uh, enough compensation for white maybe it's possible it was possible to play this way so <clears throat> knight f2 this is i think this is the reason queen g5 seems to be the the main problem otherwise it looks like a great move queen g5 check takes f g5 and then knight e4 this may be the worrying thing yeah rook e1 and somehow it's all pinned and forked and stuff so this was possible but the winning move here is queen to h5 just exchange the queens be happy peace up all done you know nicely uh yeah if knight f2 rook f2 ilamparthi suggests to me queen sorry queen g5 takes takes knight e4 rook f2 yeah this is possible but i think black does have some winning chances here with an extra exchange maybe it's possible to draw okay getting back to the game now it's getting wild and intense queen f8 was played by nepo and nepo said okay what do you want to do i'm going to put my queen here if you are going to take i'm going to take back i'll be a piece up i'm happy with it so let's switch and see what happens next and nihal is down to four three he he moves his queen back and he's now looking at the knight he wants to take bishop into f6 he wants to take that piece nepo is like what should i do what should i play now one minute still he has an extra one minute he also sees nihal's clock look look this is these are subtle things where you realize he sees nihal's clock on the right and and he's like oh he's only got five seconds i can make a move quickly he will go wrong and so this is where things get really intense because when you think your opponent is low on time and you try to play on the time it can go either way because you may also start making mistakes but look at nihal i mean look at his concentration completely focused on the position this, this, is, this, is, this is genius okay this is genius i mean i was standing there i was watching i was my heart was beating guys when you are looking at this your heart will beat your heart will beat and uh, that's what was happening to me like queen h4 first now i'm threatening bishop into f6 so he defends it and nihal had already seen it by the way bishop into e4 is what you want to play because if rook into e4 then bishop into f6 and if bishop into e4 if knight into e4 then bishop into g7 but the problem is this bishop is pinned it cannot move and so instantly he plays king h1 without so that's like he was thinking in his opponent's time what are the moves that nepo can play in this position ah he will play queen g7 let me move my king 
and now you see this knight cannot move because it's pinned this knight cannot move because f6 will hang so black is facing problems he's a piece up but he's in trouble <laughs> Jamil says heart should be okay my heart was beating very quickly heart was beating very quickly and now bishop b7 f3 knight d2 and and you can see how nepo is also looking at what nihal will do and playing his moves very quickly again again this is a brilliant moment because knight d2 attacks the rook on f1 but nihal is like he has six seconds to decide what to do and by the way there's two seconds increment with every move so every move you make you get two seconds more and nihal is thinking and he picks up the bishop the knight on f6 and again nepo is ready with his move queen g6 and comes comes a brilliant moment in the game okay guys now comes the brilliant moment this is where i want you to realize what a genius nihal is bishop b7 f3 okay because now if you you have to move the knight or else i'll take it so you play knight d2 and nihal picks this up so you can't take the rook you can't take the rook because g7 is hanging so queen g6 and now you have six seconds where do you move the rook guys come on put yourself in nihal's shoes and try to come up with a move black white to move white to move and try to feel the pressure you know what i'm training you guys is that when you go to play a tournament next if you go you face such a pressure uh, in you within you you will be able to face it well this is the training so this is white to move what do you play here what is the move Uh, venomous technology chess base india is there on flipkart it's it's us most likely it's us you can write on chess base india at gmail.com if you have any questions rook g1 rook f2 guys think think you are in nihal's shoes don't make some moves which is so if rook f2 there is rook swooping into e1 attacking the queen king and it's already horrible horrible moment you're going to lose so rook f2 is losing rook g1 which is the most expected move and you know always strong players expect moves so rook g1 is what he was expecting nepo here he was expecting the move rook g1 but now comes a tremendous blow to rook g1 what is the move it's actually it's something which uh, you should have seen and remember you have only six seconds to decide what you want to do here you're facing one of the best blitz players in the world rook g1 what's the move now it's actually winning for black after rook g1 the reason being i'm going to wait for all of you yes knight into f3 absolutely not rook e1 if you play rook e1 then he'll just take with the queen or with the uh, with the rook but there comes knight takes f3 and now he attacks the rook also the queen and if you take bishop f3 there is bishop into f3 check and the king is just cornered Ooh, you have to lose their rook you are going to get mated so that's the reason why here nihal comes up with a brilliant move f5 yes very good all those who said f5 fantastic job you are playing well and now the the important thing is the queen cannot maintain itself on this file all the squares are covered bishop covers this queen pawn so the queen has to take and now once you take nihal was very quick to play this his point being if you take on f3 i'll take back yes you can take my bishop but not yet because once i take on f3 you will be under a check and that's that's beautiful that's beautiful and let's let's continue and you will see how quickly nihal responds see five four three two two and he's down to two seconds and he finds the move f5 that brings it to four seconds 
brings it to four. Nepo is surprised. He hadn't seen. And now Rook G1, Queen G6. Again, Queen F4. I mean, how do you make such moves? How do you play these moves with such speed? Queen F4 attacking the knight on D2. You can't, you could not have moved the bishop over there because F3 was hanging. But Queen comes to F4, attacks the knight on D2. And Niha, right now Nepo is thinking, oh, what should I do? He plays H6. Now Bishop C3, another fantastic move with just 7 seconds. Look at the composure. Look at the composure in the position. Now the knight is hanging. Where do you take it? Rook E2. And there comes Queen. <laughs> Look at this final moment. Nepo is so upset. He resigns and look at Nihal. He's like, oof. My god. That was a game. That was an unbelievable game. Just to tell you guys what happened. So Queen G6, Nepo went back. And now you really want to move this bishop. Because then it's a pin. But F3 is hanging. So therefore, Queen F4. And this move he made win within a second. You know, this is... Brilliant. You want to pick up the knight. Here. And the knight is kind of trapped. And you also defend f3. I think this is very tough. Very tough. These two moves which Nihal found in an instant. f5. Rook g1 and queen f4. Brilliant. h6 was played. I don't know. Nepo couldn't find something here. His knight is not moving. He said at least let me do h6. So that if you take here. I will take on f6 back. And here Nihal played bishop c3 attacking the knight. And when rook e2 came, I think already there are many ways to win. Like bishop into d2 also seems to be a winning move here. He found queen to b8 check and Nepo resigned. Because there's only one square for the king. And now guys, I'm going to leave the last move to you. What does white play? White to play and win. White to play and win. Mate in one. Come on. Mate in one. Mate in one. Come on. Find the move. Of course you all can. And that's why he resigned. But you could see how Nepo was dejected. But at the same time, uh, he also felt that, you know, uh, Nihal played well. You know, I should give it up to this boy. Queen h8, absolutely guys, brilliant, brilliant. Queen h8 mate and this is, this is game over. Um, again, just want to bring this forth this point of how to maintain your composure. I always remember this, these movies where there's a war or some kind of um, a scene where there's a villain who's attacking the hero okay and the hero is right on the ground he's almost going to be dead and then he finds some kind of a small kind of an equipment and he finds that hope and he fights back you know like something like that and that's where i have actually learned even when you are low on time don't give up learn from players like nihal how they are fighting how they fight here and how they never give up and this was the end uh, here i was standing there uh, by the way, that's Nihal's sponsor, Akshay Kalpa, doing a fantastic job helping Nihal's talent. But these kids need support, you know, they are so good. Can you imagine this, this final moment where he played this move, Queen F5 and Queen F4. I think these are the champion moves. Knight D2, he's down, down to, uh, like he takes and now he's down to 2 seconds. In fact, coming to 1, coming to 1 and he finds F5. He finds F5 and then Nepo takes it. And then Rook G1 comes back and Queen F4. This is, for me, it says this boy is ultimately talented. You know, too good, too good. And I hope that um, you will, you understand yeah, what sort of a genius he is. He's just 15 years old. Uh, sorry, he's now 16. We had a video. He's 16 years old, but unbelievable. So that was about today. And whenever you are under time pressure, remember Nihal, how he's focused, how he's thinking. Whenever you face a stronger rated opponent, higher rated opponent, don't keep looking at him, staring at him. Don't look at his expressions. Don't try to see, oh, what is he doing? Focus on your moves, you and your chess. That is the most important. Okay, guys. And now coming to the last story, okay, of today, which I had promised uh, to 
uh, who was it? Uh, Kartar Singh. I'm sorry if I'm uh, saying the name out wrong. Was it Kartar Singh or some other name? Yeah. Parwar Singh. Sorry. Parwar Singh. And Parwar Singh who, who said, I started playing chess few months ago. I'm disabled, can't walk since the age of nine. I'm 22 and now and finding chess was great as I found something that I can do without restrictions. Been loving these streams to learn. Fantastic. And now uh, Parwar, I'm going to show you a guy whom, who will be your inspiration. Okay. This is Shailesh Nerlikar. Siddharth Natarajan says, Sagar, make this an ongoing series. Watching the live footage with analysis makes it so interesting. Provides all context and knowledge. I, I think so, Siddharth. It's a good idea. I and I was waiting for your feedback. If you guys enjoyed it, we'll do it more often. Ashuto Shoja, how happy or in awe you were when you saw Nihal win here. I was ecstatic. You know, I was ecstatic. I was waiting for Nepo to go so that I can go and congratulate Nihal. So when Nepo left, I went there and I said to Nihal, what a game, man. Look at my heartbeat. And Nihal was like, you know, he's calm, he's cool. He's like, yeah, thanks. Even if he beats maybe Carlson, he'll be cool. Because, you know, he believes that he can beat these people. And so, but I'm sure he was happy because this was a game, a uh, really uh, nice one. So, Parwar Singh. Okay. So, here's the story of a man who is my hero. Okay. And uh, he, he was my hero. Uh, since many years so that is Shailesh Nerlikar he passed away uh, two years ago uh, at the age of 41 uh, or 40 and that's Na Shailesh that is him with his mother and uh, Shailesh was a normal kid when he was born you know he was born in uh, as a normal you can see him here in the center absolutely no no problems Abhishek Sharma, thank you so much Abhishek for your super chat. Here is Shailesh again, here. You can see that already some issues in his legs. It's like uh, brittle bones. But uh, what had happened to him was, he had gone to a hospital and the doctor had given him an overdose of calcium. Okay. Uh, he had given him an overdose so basically he was suffering from an illness called quadriplegia and that actually made him uh, lose the strength in his bones so that he couldn't walk he couldn't sit he couldn't even move so he's just lying down always okay even if he has to turn on his side he needs help he couldn't do anything uh, so i saw him at a tournament in sangli when I was playing and I was around 14 years old at that point or 13 I got really surprised you know our first reaction to seeing people who are disabled or who have some form of disability is like oh, oh so bad you know I same feeling I was young at that point and uh, I didn't know what to do I couldn't sleep that night I was just thinking how could he move what could what can he do you know I was just not feeling comfortable and then Next tournament, when I went again, I saw him and I mustered up the courage to go to him. I actually went to him and I told him, uh, Shailesh, how are you? Uh, or something like this. And he said, Array, come, what's your rating? And I said, my rating is 2000 something. He said, oh, 2000 player has come to me. Come, come, let's analyze chess. You know, he was filled with so much excitement and love for chess. And that's when I realized that actually when Shailesh found suffering from quadriplegia and who couldn't move he couldn't do anything chess was the thing which actually saved him chess was the game where he found his solace where he could spend time to just analyze games to look at moves he would and you know here he plays in tournaments sleeping that's how because he cannot sit and sometimes he call, he calls out a move he says knight e4 and his mother would make a move over there but then he would start using sometimes a stick if there was a pawn nearby he wanted to make move on his own he wanted to his hands also he couldn't move but a stick he could use and this is how he would play you know often uh, and uh, this is his family here so Shailesh got a rating of 1700 guys 1700 in 2006 I couldn't believe how he could do it 
and then of course his rating fell down because it was becoming whenever he lay down and played his head started to pain because he always wanted to win he always wanted to win and uh, you know here is something that he used to write to me uh, in messages he used to say book book lekar board par practice karte samay 15 minute mein hi mansik thakan aati hai aur neend lagti hai i feel tired in 15 minutes टूर्नामेंट में जब हायर रेटेड लगता है तो डर के मारे पेट में दर्द होता है और बोर्ड पर हारने से पहले मन ही हार जाता है और 1800-1900-2021 सौ से के रेटेड लगते ही मैं बोर्ड पर बुक मूव तो करता हूँ पर मन में जीतने का हौसला नहीं होता यू नो ही वॉज थिंकिंग ऑल दिस दैट व्हेन आई फेस 1800-1900 हंड्रेड आई फील नर्वस आई फील टेंस पेट में दर्द होता है आई फील द पेन इन द स्टमक ऑल ऑफ दिस ही वॉज थिंकिंग एंड ही रोड टू मी ऑल दीज मैसेजेस uh and you know i tried to whatever i could i i spoke with him we discussed things but he was such a deep thinker in fact uh he met abdul kalam once and he was felicitated he was also felicitated in kolhapur in 2015 and this is a very nice message by surya shekhar ganguly a top gm who has a beautiful channel and he wrote to shailesh and you can read this later uh and and the biggest moment for me was when shailesh traveled from kolhapur all the way to attend my wedding here in pune i think that was just uh, brilliant i mean it was a big big uh, memory for me still he came all the way yeah he couldn't he was carried he traveled maybe in train it was or bus i don't remember that's his mother here his father and that's kapil lohana here in the back who has always helped him and then the comes the biggest element of his story and this is something which i cannot believe so shailesh told me sagar i want to go outside india and play chess there is a world disabled championship happening in germany please get me enrolled there i want to play i'm like okay shailesh it's good sometimes he would say things he was like i want to become a grandmaster i want to do this i was like okay yes you can do it i used to motivate him but deep within i felt like no this is not possible and the same happened with world disabled i felt like you know traveling outside india first you need a passport a visa then you need uh, to make sure how to travel in flight because you have to lie down you have to reach germany you have to make all these arrangements how are we going to do all, all of that and he said no nothing doing i want to play so i started writing to uh, you know he got a certificate actually from a doctor who said he's okay to travel in flight so i wrote to lufthansa and a few airlines and look at what the response we got yeah lufthansa said that the fare will be 10 lakh rupees 46233 one way the return fare will be 9 lakh 71636 that's the fare they were quoting because he couldn't sit in a normal chair he couldn't sit in a normal chair and therefore we actually somehow you know uh tried to figure out how to go there and air india you know the airlines which is our very own came to the rescue it gave him the best rates and actually shailesh traveled and there was this organization called barti baba ambedkar research and training institute uh he actually they they sponsored his trip they sponsored a part and these are all the people actually shailesh had told this article i wrote after shailesh passed away when he was alive he told me sagar thank all these people they helped me to go to um germany and these are all the people from barti who had actually helped him i i put them down in the final article and that shailesh after reaching uh, frankfurt from frankfurt he traveled to dresden in this train with his mother in this train and there he is lying on the uh, here at the opening ceremony of world disabled at the opening ceremony uh, that's him his mother and uh, Shai, uh, kapil lohana went with him as a coach over there and then he played some good games he scored two and half out of seven but you know it he also got featured in, in the german newspaper there the next is zug which is like the next move uh, and the biggest thing which shailesh actually found there was a chair was a chair for himself so he could travel around without the need or any support required you know he could just lie down uh, and there were some controls there or people could push him basically it was a step towards getting independent and uh, well he had of course made india proud by by playing there the indian flag here 
it was amazing you know and on 10th of march he was just 40 years old uh, you can imagine what a what a big impact he had had on my life and uh, everyone around he passed away um he was doing fine but his chest started to pain in the night and he was rushed to the hospital but he couldn't survive he it was a devastating news and then shailesh passed away and i think for me he always remem- remains as the bravest man i ever know bravest man and the biggest example it the biggest example of never say die spirit in my life you know shailesh nerlikar man who couldn't walk who couldn't sit who couldn't do anything and there he was playing chess he he wanted to do by the way and you know we used to joke about so much he was also in love with a girl of course he didn't tell it to that girl because he felt that she wouldn't say yes uh, and there are some videos of shailesh i never managed to do an interview with him but there are interviews of him online uh, and these are put in these articles moderators if you can just put this link, link in the description uh, in the chat people can read more about him uh, he was uh, truly a uh, uh, hero and i think uh, that's what i would say that um, it it chess is a world where you will find people of every kind There's so many inspiring people and that's why i feel that uh, everyone who watches this show uh, and parwar singh uh, you are going through a tough time i know but take uh, inspiration from shailesh and i think we can all fight our hardships yeah whatever hardships you have you can fight it just keep shailesh in mind and that's enough guys today was a brilliant day thank you all for joining in uh, i i really uh, respect all of you who wake up early and and uh, join me in the chat uh, jaimin sahiba from one ca to another great work thank you jaimin uh, there was one more sumit jain true hero guys please like and share please like and share this streams thank you so much uh, and uh, i hope to see you guys today in the evening for the tournament please register for the knighthood blitz and then tomorrow again uh, tomorrow being sunday it's not an off because tomorrow i'm working so tomorrow morning we will meet again uh, and uh, monday i'll try to take the off and uh, in the evening we'll have hari krishna tomorrow uh, for his bl chess very finished second is now india number 2 but enough jokes about india number 2 already yeah you guys have been seeing on vidit's channel so we'll we'll not get into that but great respect for both hari vidit anand and everyone take care bye bye see you and i'll see you again tomorrow bye oh one more super chat before i leave sagar bhai you have also impacted so many lives just stay the same a lot of love and respect to you thank you sumit uh very glad to know especially all of you waking up on time is the most important thing bye bye